The Oryxcel podcast is best experienced when listening with headphones or earbuds. Thank you and enjoy. Hello, friends. This is Evan McMillan, but an apple a day does not keep me away. My name is Philip Ojimo, and I have no idea why Evan just said that. And my name is Sally Smithson. <laughs> and, uh, welcome to. The, the Oryx Cell! Sally, you, uh, you weren't supposed to do the intro with us. This is like, uh, our thing. Oh, uh, relax, Evan. I think she adds something nice to our duo. A woman's touch. <laughs> right, well, I just, uh, I wanted to wait until the intro part. Also, you know, I set up your mic and stuff in the other room. It's kind of crowded in here with the three of us trying to record, you know? Well, you could always scoot over it, tad, love. This estate is quite fancy. The room is quite big enough for the three of us. You, uh, you don't have to sit so close to Philip. <laughs> You're just as close to him as I am. <laughs> yes, but she's my girlfriend. <sighs> just forget it. Oh! I know. Why don't I go and make some tea for all of us while you two introduce a podcast and such? Would you boys like some tea? No, not really. I would love some of your tea, dear. Brilliant. Tea it is. I'll be right back. <laughs> Evan, is there a problem? No, of course not. It's just... I mean, it's my podcast, you know, and... My podcast? Our. It's our podcast, you know, so I don't see why she can't just respect my boundaries and shit. I mean, I'm letting you two stay in my estate, right? The least you can do is not be so kissy while I'm next to you. <laughs> kissy? Yes, kissy. Flirty and sex talking stuff. <laughs> Evan, we haven't done anything like that. Like, you haven't? No, we, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we haven't. Uh, not in the two months we've been dating, no. So, what do you two do at night while I'm asleep or playing DVD? Uh, we usually just cuddle for a bit and watch Netflix. We have uh, started watching Black Mirror, uh, season one, episode three, I believe. But, uh, but when we don't do that, I just stay in and read while she goes out late for groceries and stuff. Groceries? That late at night? 10 or 11 is not super late. Like, last night she had to go out to get pork or sausage or something. You know, for breakfast this morning. Uh, for those of you listening, Sally is an excellent chef. Her breakfast is wonderful. <laughs> Who says the British can't cook? <laughs> right, except I'm pretty sure she made us eggs this morning. <laughs> and they were still good. I don't... Hello, everyone. Tea is ready. That fast? A good nurse is always prepared. <laughs> Oolong tea for Philip. It's good for the heart. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. And lavender tea for Evan. It's good for anger management. Thanks. And what tea do you have, Sally? It's called ginseng, darling. And what the fuck is that good for? Let's just say it wouldn't benefit you, Evan. What does that... Womanly things, Evan. Uh, ew. So, have we started the podcast yet? Who are we talking to today? Oh, no, we haven't started. You know what? Why don't we take some time to sip this tea first? We'll have a message from our sponsor and then come back to talk to the doctor in the plague. Um, okay. Why? Sure. Hold on, audience. We'll be right back. The Jane Romero Show is back. It's time to catch up with your favorite survivors. Starting with Nancy Wheeler and Steve Harrington. Are they dating again? Find out after episode 8.5 of the Oryxcel podcast when the Jane Romero Show returns.
Welcome back to the Oryx cell, everyone. I specifically told you oh, not to... Oh, liven up, dearie. <laughs> um, Sally, maybe let's let Evan handle this a little more. It is his show, after all. Oh, all right, all right. But he knows that I'm just teasing. Right, Evan, dear? You know that I'm only teasing. So... Last week, we had our great friend Billy come in, and we had a lovely conversation about, uh, starvation. And this week, we have three very special guests as we prepare to talk about the healthcare system and coronavirus. So without further tea-related delay, let's get hooked into this discussion. Ha. Hooked. Very funny, Evan. Come on, it was a little funny. No, no, it wasn't. Cool, so we've all been thoroughly acquainted with the lovely Sally Smithson here, otherwise known as the nurse. Some of us are a bit more than acquainted. <laughs> oh, Philip. <laughs> For a couple, you don't seem acquainted enough. But regardless, what would a nurse be without a good doctor? Introducing Mr. Herman Carter. According to your schedule, I was supposed to be introduced ten minutes ago. Time is of the essence. Is there an explanation for this delay? <laughs> we got a bit distracted. <laughs> mm, and what a fine distraction you are, love. <laughs> Aww. Well, that's downright sickening. But speaking of sickness, our final guest was known as the Plague. Her name is Adiris. Hmm. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, hmm. It says, uh, is it just Adiris? Do you have a last name? Assalamu alaikum. Evan, Sally, Herman, and Philip. Wa alaikum assalam, Adiris. To answer your question, Evan, my full name is now Adiris Abdallah. I have given myself this surname to show my devotion to Allah. In its entirety, my name means persistent, resourceful, and empathetic servant of God. I take much pride in my current name. But, uh, <laughs> but not too much pride because that is a sin. Wait, go back a second. Ask Salman Akin, what, what is that? It sounds like a fucking spell. It is, um, Arabic. It is a common greeting for followers of Islam. Philip, you, um, you never told me you were, um, Islamic. Well, no. I would be Muslim, not Islamic. But I am... I am not Muslim. Not anymore. It was just a common religion at that time, so I remember the greeting. Your departure is a shame, Philip. I am sure Allah would welcome you back with open arms if you accept him into your heart. And I am sure he wouldn't. Because he is a societal construct designed from ignorance. Now, can we talk about something that matters, please? And uh, wait to one moment, Herman. That's Dr. Carter to you. Uh, right, Dr. Carter. I apologize. Um, but I'm curious to know why Adiris has chosen Islam as her faith. I understand that we were all taken by the entity at different times. For me, it was around 1981. 1919. Um, 1914, I believe. 1972. Right, yes. All of us roughly in the 20th century. Uh, but for you, Adiris? Roughly 3000 BC. Wow, you are fucking old, lady. Evan! It isn't homely to comment on a woman's age. Well, last time I checked, this wasn't your home. To answer your question, my body is only 20 years old. But I suppose I have been around a lot longer. Yes, <laughs> a lot longer than Islam. You, um, you seem to predate the religion you now follow. How inane. Now, can we please talk about science for God's sake? Hmm, science? For God's sake? It's an expression, you half-wit. Well, it is true. I was not always a follower of Allah. But after leaving the entity's realm, I found that Babylon was now gone. The gods I used to worship were relegated to the memories of a forgotten people's memories. Even I couldn't fully remember them. A bit of fog in the mind, but I knew that there had to be a god out there that saved me from the entity. So I went searching for the truth, and I found a mosque. There are quite a few of them here in Iraq. Back in my day, it used to be called Mesopotamia. 
but now it is the nation of Iraq. So yes, I am older than this religion I serve. But it would seem Allah has been serving me since before his followers were calling him that. What a graceful and merciful God. Well, and no offense to you, Miss Adiris, but there is no way your God could be more graceful and merciful than a Christian God. He is the true savior, the king of kings. Um, Sally, you do know that we are talking about the same God, right? We... No, but you're an Islamist. A Muslim. Oh, right, love, that. That's not, uh... Is it? Uh, I believe it is the same God, just different ways of following him. Oh. Huh. Like, what are some of the differences? I am glad you asked. There are lots, so I will spare the details for this podcast, but in short, we, um... We follow the Quran, not the Bible. We pray five times a day. We observe Ramadan. But one of the main practices for me as a woman is to stay humble and modest. Oh. Um. Modest? Wait, is that why you have that scarf thingy on your head? I know the audience can't see it, but... Hijab, yes, hijab. We wear it for a lot of reasons. Partly to not tempt men. Partly to keep us safe from them and their primal desires. And though I do not currently seek a man for marriage, I would hope my hijab will ensure that the man loves me for who I am, not for what I look like. When what I look like changes, I would hope the man I am with would remain faithful to me based on my character. up with her my diagnosis hysteria perhaps she's (laughs) feeble-minded no no not that i am i left the stove on downstairs i need to turn the stove off good god sally you're going to burn the whole house down again (laughs) Uh, i'll be back love (laughs) sally What's wrong? Drink your tea, Philip, before it gets cold. I'll be right back, my love. Well, okay. Don't know what that was about. Womanly things, maybe. (laughs) Right, Plague? My name is Adiris Abdallah, not the Plague. And, um, I do not sense you know much about womanly things, Evan. No, I know a lot about women, all right? I was a real ladies' man back in the day. Just like my dad, he he taught me everything I know. How do you think he snagged someone as beautiful as my mom? I thought you told me your mother wasn't around very much when you were... Yeah, well, uh, my mom, she, uh, left on a... It was, uh, like, a fishing accident. Bears, that kind of thing. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, Enough! I am leaving. Uh, What? You must be joking. (laughs) Dr. Gata, why? Yeah, what the fuck, man? You didn't even get to talk yet. What an astute observation, Evan. That is precisely why I am leaving. I thought this podcast would provide a valuable platform to discuss issues that matter. Neuroscientific issues that actually matter. Something of substance, at least. Not this nonsense of religion, love, or womenly things. You are wasting my valuable time. Good day. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How about this, Doc? We take a break for our sponsors, and then you can talk about whatever it is you care about, okay? Uh, fine. Prepare yourselves for pure, unadulterated science. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure. Whatever that means, bro. Dior Excel will be right back. This is Life underscore Gamer, otherwise known as Fang Ming on Twitch. As much as I love owning you noobs while I stream Dead by Daylight, I want to use my platform as a streamer to tackle a serious issue. 
the fight to stop Asian hate. Racism is a serious problem, which is why I am starting a charity stream called Teabag the Racists. For a donation of any amount, I will go on stream and 1v1 all the bigoted content creators that play DVD. I will make them feel so dog water at the game that they will quit playing video games entirely and the world will be a less prejudiced place as a result. Join me on stream this Friday to teabag the racists. Because when it comes to black, brown, and Asian hate, it's game over. Okay, and we are back. All right, Doctor, you're up. Tell us about your life after the Entity's Realm. Well, in all candor, my life after the Entity's Realm is a continuation of my life during it. What does that mean? My mission remains the same, developing an unwavering mastery of the human mind by any means necessary. Ooh, mind control. Oh, now that sounds fucking awesome. No, it sounds immortal. No being should have complete control over another person's thoughts and actions. What you are attempting to do is reprehensible. Oh, really? You? Of all people are going to debate the ethics of brainwashing. <laughs> you are quite possibly the most brainwashed woman I have ever met. And my mother was a devout Catholic who married a hypnotist. My belief in Allah does not come from the brain. <laughs> Clearly. It comes from the heart. Everything I have done, past and present, has been in the name of God's grace and mercy. Everything? Yes, everything. Even sacrificing your own people? I... I never... Careful, Adiris. Lying is a sin, is it not? Hello, everyone. Sorry about the wait. I figured I would clean up the bathroom a bit while I was in there. What, uh... What did I miss? Doc's got plague and checkmate. Wait, Sally, I thought you were turning off the stove. I can turn off the stove and clean the bathroom, Philip. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, okay, yeah. Um, Adiris, um, now what was this about human sacrifice? <sighs> when the plague spread amongst my people, we tried everything to cure our sickness. Prayer, incense, healing fountains. Nothing worked. Eventually, we turned to more unconventional methods. Darker methods. Mm -hmm. So am I still the morally reprehensible one here, or...? My actions, no matter how morose, were done for the grace and mercy of God. Adiris, where was this grace and mercy when we were forced to slaughter innocent survivors in the Entity's realm? Where was this grace and mercy when this coronavirus pandemic struck? Where was the grace and mercy when a similar disease spread amongst your own people? What kind of God is merciful and lets millions of people die every day? A God that works in mysterious ways. Well, it would seem that God needs to work a little harder, no? I will send a thousand curses upon you, you Heretic! Oh no! I'm so scared! Quick! Everyone, send me your thoughts and prayers! I'm certain that will help! <laughs> everyone, everyone, please calm down. Why don't we talk about something all of us have experience in? Um, Dr. Carter, you brought up the coronavirus pandemic. I would assume, as a doctor and a nurse, it must be quite difficult to view the state of the medical field during this unprecedented time. Philip, you do know that I'm not that kind of doctor, right? I don't do checkups or prescribe Flintstone gummies. Doctor is more of a moniker. I am a scientist and an information specialist first and foremost. An observer of the mind. Well, I suppose I do more than just observe it. <laughs> I 
Oh, darling, while I was a nurse, it was only for insane people who I then murdered. <laughs> I don't think anyone here is actually a qualified medical professional. Oh, well, uh, this is, um, awkward. Your idea to put these three together, not mine, yours. Just remember that. D well, how was I supposed to know? Because she's your girlfriend or something, and you're supposed to know things about her. I would show you my willow grain if I could. Can could we just get back to the topic at hand? COVID-19. People are such imbeciles when it comes to their blatant denial of science. Wear your mask and make sure to social distance, or I will kill you. Ditto. Well, perhaps we do not need to kill people who do not wear masks? If they do not take it seriously, we'll probably kill them regardless. Well, I haven't died yet. Evan, are, are you anti-mask? Uh, no, but like, do you know how long I had to wear that stupid fucking Chuckles mask in the Entity's realm? I am not about to leave it and do the same shit. That, that isn't the same kind of mask that- Hey, Plague, it's been a while since my dad's dragged me into church, but I'm pretty sure judging people is a sin too. Back off, okay? Amen. I will pray for your health, Evan. As should you. What I meant was, we're not killers anymore. We've changed, right? We've all stopped killing people, yes? Yes, most certainly. Despite what Western media would have you believe, it would be against my religion to kill in such a way. So yes, I have stopped. Unequivocally. Uh, define stopped. Dr. Carter, what did you do? I, I simply did what I must for the sake of science. Herman. Don't Herman me. Hi. Hate that. Superfluous, superficial sweetness. My parents used that exact same tone on me any time I stepped out of line. They wouldn't punish me with a beating. They would punish me with that overbearing tone of love. For instance, when I was 11 and they found me experimenting on a dog, the mutt was old as dirt and was going to die soon anyway. I figured I might as well use this insignificant animal's last few days to get a better understanding of the minds of complex species as they're eroding. That early experimentation, that dog's sacrifice, it was the stepping stone to my curiosities into the mind. What I did to it didn't matter in the long term. The dog was merely a pawn on my chessboard, a means to an end. A springboard for further scientific curiosity. But of course, my parents didn't see it that way. They just stood there, horrified, all because I euthanized the family pet all over the living room. I think his name was Sparky. Isn't that a cute name? What I do to lower life forms in the name of science is no one's business. And frankly, it seems I am one of the few people who are willing to go to the lengths it takes to get the world to where we need it to be scientifically. I will drag this world out of the dark ages one cadaver at a time. Because I, Philip, am a hero. What have any of you done for humanity? You know, maybe mind control isn't fucking awesome after all. Oh, that's a bit fucked, love. <laughs> Please. We're killers. We are all fucked. <sighs> Respectfully, Dr. Carter, I do not associate with that word. I am not a killer. Nor am I. Same here. I have not intentionally killed a single person since leaving the Entity's realm. In... intentionally? 
Um... Sally, what... What do you mean by intentionally? I... I never... I'm... Uh... There's no pork in the fridge, is there, Sally? Yeah. What? There's no pork in the fridge, is there, Sally? Last night you told Philip you went out to get groceries, right? You said you were getting pork or sausage or something for breakfast today. But today, you made us eggs and this stupid, weird-tasting tea. So, if I go downstairs and check the fridge, am I going to see pork in there? Or are you lying about that, too? I... I can make some more tea, if that's what you two want. I can make, um... You've been out killing, haven't you? Every few days, you just... No. No. Why would I? After leaving the Entity's realm, why would I ever... Perhaps because my diagnosis was correct. Perhaps because you are incredibly feeble-minded. Don't you dare call me that. I... I am not feeble. I am not... I am not like those degenerate, mentally ill... <laughs> I, I, I just have a problem, okay? There is no problem that cannot be fixed with the strength of a loss. Uh, would you shut up? There is no god. A and if there is a god, it's the entity. Stupid, corrupting, fucking spider douche. Ha! <laughs> Told you it would catch on, Philly. Urban, now is not the time. Sally, you, you have to tell me what you have done. No more lies. No more lies. I, I love you. Just, just tell me what you have done. Please. <sighs> Philly, do you remember where we met? Not in the entity spirit world. I mean, where we re-met on Earth. You were driving that car from the wreckers, going who knows where, utterly lost. But your car managed to break down right as you reached the outskirts of my asylum. Out of all the roads you could have taken, despite all the turns you could have made in this universe, you ended up there with me again i thought there was no way that was coincidence that there was no way us two who shared our time in the spirit world would happen to find each other again when i recognized it was you i knew it meant something I couldn't treat you like any other man before. You were truly special. You didn't deserve to have to deal with my problem. What? What problem? My problem is that I have a need. A need so strong it feels as essential as breathing itself. This need as strong as breath is the need to take that breath away from others. I need to choke. Please tell me you mean choke as in, like, mess up. No, I've certainly done a lot of that, but I do mean in the most literal sense, I need to choke. I have to feel my hands around someone's throat. I have to feel their struggle for life as they fight me to get that essential need that is air. And, and I have have to close their eyes one final time when those needs are not met. <laughs> All the time. On the road, from the time you picked me up in Nebraska to the time we got to Evans Estate in Washington, I've been choking. I've been leaving a trail of bodies after every happy memory I've made with you. I was a mass murderer before entering the Entity's realm. <laughs> And I suppose now I am a serial killer after leaving it. Oh, my. How? How did you allure all of those 
people into it. I simply used what I knew men would respond to. You know, womanly things. You... <laughs> you are a serial killer. <laughs> and you cheated on me too. <laughs> I'm... sorry. Jesus, Sally, the, the doctor's fucked up, but you're just... evil. Eh, I'll take that. But I, I had to, Philly. <laughs> I had to. If you and I had ever gotten too close, if we had ever had sex, I would have... Killed <laughs> me! You would have fucking killed me, wouldn't you? <laughs> I love you, Philip. Link away. Philip? I am going to close my eyes. You are going to blink away. Somewhere else. I do not care where. Philip? If I open my eyes and you are still there, I swear to Allah, I will strangle you. Philip! <laughs> Goodbye, Sally. Evan? Yeah, man? Um, thank you for looking out for me, um, in your own way, I suppose. <sighs> um, I'm going to go on a walk. You can finish the podcast without me, right? I, I, I guess, but... Uh, well, uh, that happened. In the span of human history, monogamy is one of the more recent developments. Both of the reactions are completely illogical and an utter waste of time. Just like this podcast. Ugh. This was Dr. Herman Carter, signing off. That is the most soulless man I have ever met. In all truth, I think he rivals the entity in the realm of apathy. I mean, he's kind of got a point a little bit, right? A doc doesn't give a shit about anybody but Bill Nye the science guy, but he, he seems kind of content with life, you know? I'd love to be a little more content with mine. Evan, theology aside, do you really want to be like the doctor? A cold, unfeeling machine? Because that is not life. That is void. <sighs> yeah. Talk to him, Evan. Huh? Talk to Philip. He is your friend, yes? Y yeah. Friend. Then go to him. Be there for him. Be open with him. You know, try empathy. Isn't that a survivor perk? Are we still killers? <laughs> well, folks, that's all the time we have left today for the Oryxel podcast. Tune in next week when we talk to the spirit and her ancestor, the Oni. 
Um, Adiris, do you have uh, anything to add? Have faith, everyone. Have faith. Right. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the fog. Thank you for listening to episode 2 of 10 of the Orc Cell podcast. This episode was written, directed, and produced by Solomon Troop. The role of the Trapper is played by Anthony Ray Morales. The role of the Wraith was played by Solomon Troop. The role of the Nurse was played by Lissa Grossman Combs. The role of the Doctor was played by Baruch Belmont. The role of the Plague was played by Echo Sapa. The role of Jane was played by Bree Price. And the role of Fang was played by Astrid Wong Sirby. Some of the music heard in this episode was composed by Anthony Kay. Some of it wasn't. <laughs> Links below for proper credit. Art of this episode's cast was drawn by James Giannico. New episodes of the Oryx Cell release every other Thursday at 6pm EST, but there are also animatics, lore readings, behind the scenes, and other awesome content between uploads of the main story. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any new releases. In addition to posting to YouTube, the Oryx Cell podcast can also be streamed on Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, and uh, probably some other places too. So uh, check the description and share it with your friends. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Tumblr for updates, as well as joining our Discord server, The Troopiverse, to talk to the cast, the crew, and anyone who enjoys what we do here. Links below in the description. Dead by Daylight is the intellectual property of Behavior Interactive, but I can make a podcast about it because, uh, fair use or something, uh, parody and whatnot, uh, do not sue me, please. Love you. And hey, I also love our Kickstarter backers, Jonathan Troop, Ariza Luca, Nikki Ahrens, James Genico, Eli Elias Kendrick Kim Blueface Henderson III, uh, Mike Flink, Shelby Richards, George Regent, Rico Shea, Jared aka Derpman, Cassandra Rodenbaugh, Hunter aka Muds Kips, right, is that, that's it, right? Jacob Lentini, Baruch Belmont, and Pixelbush aka Will aka The Lore Guy. Thank you again for listening. Share this project with a friend so the algorithm will boost us. And as always, we'll see you in the fog.